Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tanker Tips with your buddy Dan. So today we're going to talk about some basic things. We're going to talk about some skills. We're going to talk about how they affect your tank. We're going to talk about some equipment. We're going to talk about some beginner mistakes. We're just going to, not going to get too deep into things, but we're going to talk a little bit about things you can do to help yourself. So here we've got my T-150 and you'll see the commander's 80%, everyone else looks to be at 88. But if you look closely, you'll see they're actually at 80% plus 10% of the commander's skills. So the commander's always going to look less skilled than comparatively to where the other guys are. Now, this affects everything. So your view range is affected, your... Um, your hole traverse is affected, your signal range is affected, your gun aiming time is affected, um, and your loading speed is affected. And so these values over here are your top, and then if you look here, XVM, I believe, is what's telling me what my actual signal range is, what my actual view range is, and then the, the hull traverse is, you're not going to actually see that. But you would not see it turn 18 degrees per second, which is just, which is pretty bad on this tank. Um, if you look over here, we have my wonderful American heavy tank crew. And I wonder if I have, so I have a radio operator. So you see right now my signal range is at 953. That's because this tank has a lot of advantages. I have just a lot of things going on. We'll go into that in just a minute. Um, but the percentages have a big effect on all of these ability, all of these um, attributes on the tank. And as you see, clicking through, I have various tanks. This one is just over 100. Um, the KV-3 is just under. Boy, I've got to get them up. Um, the Mutant is just over. So there's a bunch of things that can affect your, affect your skills. The biggest thing is your commander you know that that 10 percent makes a big difference um the other thing is equipment and we'll get into a little more detail but things like improved ventilation and consumables like um case of cola plus 10 percent all crew skills and you'll see i've got a bunch in depot because i've been doing missions those also improve your skills now consumables also get you know consumed so you want to be careful about it um, the other thing you'll notice is we have actual skills. We have Sixth Sense, and he's training Jack of All Trades. We have Snapshot, and we're training Repairs. We have Smooth Ride, and we're training Repairs. We have Signal Boosting, I don't know why, and we're training Repairs. We have Safe Stowage, even though I've never been ammo racked in this, and training Repairs, and training Adrenaline Rush, which that's that I'm looking forward to having. So those are skills. You can also get other skills. Let me see if I can pull up the whole list. I cannot. Okay, I can. So repairs increases the speed, and this is an actual skill. So this, as soon as you get start training this, you get faster repairs. Camouflage, again, it's a skill. This reduces your um, vehicle visibility, which is really good, especially on Soviet tank destroyers. Firefighting, again, a skill. This makes your fires go out faster and do less damage. Huge. Brother in Arms is a perk, so you have to have this at 100%. In addition with Brothers of brothers in Arms, everyone in the crew has to have it. Yeah. Um, you also have skills for the loader. You've got Intuition, which means you might have changed your ammo already. Safe Stowage, which means your ammo rack doesn't blow up as much. Um, Adrenaline Rush. Each guy has their own skills. We're going to get into that in a little more detail in a later video. Um, coming over. Let's talk a little bit about equipment. This one, we're, equipment, we're going to get into a little. So let's take a look at my mutant, which I haven't put equipment on because I'm mean. So vertical stabilizer. This is a good piece of equipment if you shoot on the move or if you shoot, um, if you're moving around a lot. Plus 20% accuracy, so this is going to reduce the amount your, your, your circle aiming reticle blooms when you move. Improved ventilation, always have improved ventilation. This is just 
plus five percent to all crew skills is so good and you really do notice it um also the anything with the complex equipment which is most of them see the, the little nut you have to pay gold to remove it you're always going to do it but just be aware of that the toolbox gives plus 25 to repair speed 20 plus 25 percent you can also remove that from your tank when you're not using it um so like here i've got a camouflage net i put it on and i can demount it and it's it's free uh, go, moving on large caliber tank gun rammer this goes on most tanks minus 10 percent loading time anytime you shoot more it's a good thing Heavy spall liner. This is something that is either absolutely necessary on a tank or absolutely pointless. If you're getting hit by a lot of artillery, you want this. It reduces a lot of artillery damage. It reduces um, a lot of crew injuries. It's just really good. I have never seen this used. Um, if your if your engine catches fire a lot, it might be good, but there aren't there aren't tanks that suffer that a lot. Um, suspension durability, minus 50% to hull damage caused by suspension damage during impact and load capacity. There's actually times you use this. It's, it's very, very situational. Generally, it's things like the AMX ELC, um, which just, it, it needs that suspension durability. Um, enhanced gun line drive is very good. This uh, decreases your aiming speed. Um, really, really pretty. Uh, coated optics is useful if you move around a lot to give yourself increased uh, view range. I have this on my um, Cromwell. Binocular telescope, uh, plus 25% to view range. Uh, tank destroyers use this a lot. And again, this is not complex, so you can you can drop it off and put it on. Wet ammo rack, if you get ammo racked a lot, this can save you. But who, who gets ammo racked a lot? And camouflage net... Um, reduces detection chance when vehicle is stationary. So you see this again on tank destroyers and artillery. Um, they're also really expensive, five to 600,000. I mean, there's, you know, tier five tanks that cost that much, cost less than that. Um, they do go on sale. When you see an uh, equipment sale, you definitely want to be all over it because it is really, really important to save credits when you're saving up to get you know, like me trying to save up 2.6 million for a T-32. It's going to be a minute. Um, one last thing we're going to cover, we're going to cover some beginner mistakes. So the first thing we're going to cover is um, free experience. Um, and I always cash in free experience. So I've got some saved up because I knew I would be doing this. You'll see my Hellcat, LTP, Martyr, T-150, and TOG all have a bunch of free experience. And I can convert it at a rate of 1 gold to 25. Um, you can wait till it's on sale. When it goes on sale, it's 1 gold to 35. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do it because it, we just had a sale and it's going to be a while. So you see before, 1530 and 2147 free experience. After, 1272 gold, 85, 80, almost 8600 free experience. Boom. So what do you use that on? Well, I've got a Crusader, and I'm, I'm kind of getting tired of the Crusader. So I can upgrade to the Cromwell now, because I've got 21,000 free ex uh, combat experience and 8,600 free experience. I can do that. But it's going to cost me 4,000 free experience. And no. Why do I hit no? Because when I come over here, there's a lot of things that I can buy the upgrades that I'm going to want. Now, some of these I already have, but, you know, the upgraded tracks, the upgraded engines, this thing loves the upgraded engines because it goes from 410 engine power to 650. That makes a difference, ladies and gentlemen. The upgraded turret, so I can actually carry the good guns, makes a big difference. The upgraded radio, yeah, it's actually probably important on this tank, but it's not my top priority. But if, if, you know, if I don't spend that free experience, I can get the upgraded turret and nearly get the upgraded tracks right away, which will let me carry everything. And, you know, after a game, I can get, you know, one, maybe both of the engines, depending on how good a game I have. You know, there, there's no reason to blow all that free experience when it means I'm going to be in a shitty stock tank. Um, 
I mean, if you're if you're in a tank and it's just miserable, you know, if you're in an M3 Lee or you're in a self-propelled gun and you just you you want to be out of your misery and into the next tier, you know, hey, go for it. It's your experience. But, you know, you really want it. Like I'm nearly stock. I could get the hundred millimeter D10s. I could. I'm almost to that point. Um, I could get the engine right now if I wanted to. Um, not for 20 horsepower, but I could. You know, and again, let's say I go to the SU-152. Well, I'm going to want some experience because I want to get this gun as soon as possible because it's a really good gun. Um, the ISU-152, you really want the good gun as soon as possible. You don't want to spend a lot of free experience because you really want to get the upgrades as soon as possible. Playing stock is miserable. Um, let's look at... You know this tank now i did not start with this unlocked because i came from come on i came from the m4a3 e2 i did not have the m6 so i did not have the 90 millimeter gun unlocked when i started this if i had not had some experience saved i would have had to play with a tier 6 medium tank gun on the best tier 7 heavy in the game that would have been fucking miserable. But I got that advice, and I followed it for a change, and I had a much more enjoyable experience. So do not use free experience um, to buy into a new tank. Use free experience to upgrade that new tank once you've gotten into it. Now let's look at another thing. So we're going to look at what to look for in upgrades that you're going to be using. So here I've got my KV-1 and I've got a bunch of choices in turrets. Or a bunch of choices in guns. So we've got three tier 5 guns. We've got 86 da penetration, 110 damage. 112 penetration, 85 damage and a higher rate of fire. 15 shots a minute against 26.09, or 61 penetration, 430 damage. So if I'm picking between these two, what I'm really looking at is, well, how much how much do I need the penetration? Because remember, it's a dice roll, so it's plus, plus or minus 25%. So that is, you know, between... 100, 108 to 60 something millimeters in penetration. Damage is plus or minus 20%. You know, so these are basically flip flops of each other, but this is going to shoot a lot more often. So you're going to do more damage over time with this because you're also, you're not only going to penetrate more, but you're also going to be, and you're going to be hitting more often because it's more, much more accurate, but you're going to be shooting more. Um, this, I mean, you're just trolling with this. The dispersion is terrible. The aiming time is bad. Yeah, this is not, this is just for trolling. And I actually like using this. I'm, <laughs> I'm using it right now. Um, the 85 millimeter is a very, very, you know, it's a straight upgrade. It's 120 penetration, 160 damage. Um, dispersion is better than the 76, I believe. Yeah, better than the 76, not as good as the 57. So it's less accurate, but it hits very hard. It's got a decent rate of fire. You know, the top gun is usually a no-brainer. But you always want to be comparing. You want to be figuring out what you're going to do. Now, if you can hang out of cover, this is great, because you're just going to fire, you know, a shot every other second with a fully upgraded crew and a gun rammer and all that fun stuff. With this, if you're playing peekaboo, you want, you know, this gun or this gun. Or if you're playing peekaboom, you want this gun. Um, the other thing to look at is building crew skills. Now, this is kind of some advanced stuff. Now, I have a bunch of premium tanks. I, I bought a pre-order tank. I bought one a while back. And I've gotten a bunch of reward tanks. So let us look at premium. Let's look at all. So I've got a bunch of little Soviet light tanks. I've got the the just laughably bad Panzer II off D. Off D. Um, a couple of U.S. light tanks, um, the Mutant, and then we've got a British Medium and a British Heavy. Um, the British Medium, of course, coming with a great crew, and the British Heavy coming with a terrible crew. So let's look at USA, 
let's look at heavy tanks and let's look at everything so I've got my T29 I'm training up this crew I want this crew to be really good I've got the mutant which is I don't care about this crew at all so I play my first game of the day in this I get my times two experience now premium tanks you don't suffer a penalty for not being trained in that class of tank they don't have to be trained to the M6 A2 E1 to get full experience so what I can do, I can fight with this crew in this tank, get double experience. I can move them over here into the premium tank and get double experience. And then I can put them back in this tank if I want to work on this tank, or I can keep them here if I want to grind credits. So that's a good way to build crew skills fast and also accelerate crew training. Click this if you don't want to build free experience. Remember, it's expensive to, to build free experience and convert it over. So generally, you want to have Accelerate Crew Training on once you have a Tank Elite. Um, automatically return crew. So if I've got the crew in the Mutant, I bring them over here. All right, folks. Thanks for listening. If you have any requests for next time, things you want to see, things you don't want to see, uh, leave them in the comments. Don't forget to like, favorite, subscribe. And for Tank Tips and Digital Flash Fire, this is Dan. Have a good week.